Every journey is a shared experience, and we have been on a decades-long journey together, all of us, and that's quite remarkable. Oak Island is all you could want it to be. Frustrating, fascinating, horrifying. Oak Island and its legendary riches are located in Nova Scotia, Canada, and are among the most sought-after mysteries in history. Explorers from all over the world have been scouring the globe for enigmatic treasures and artifacts since the 19th century. According to the Oak Island curse, the island's fabled wealth will remain hidden until seven men meet their demise. Even though six people have died while trying to find gold worth billions of dollars, the risk has only increased curiosity and research. Many brave explorers are still compelled to risk everything in the hopes of discovering the island's riches, despite the high number of casualties that have occurred there. What drives their obsession with solving this age-old puzzle? What have they found out? Join us as we explore what scientists just uncovered at Oak Island that shocked the world. A little lad found an odd depression on Oak Island in 1796. Eight years after that, a search party was sent out by the Onslow Company to the region. Better late than never, even though we'll never know why they waited so long to begin the search. Once the peculiar markings were located, the explorers continued to dig until they reached a solid object. A strange inscription was unearthed on a buried stone tablet. It was only in 1886 that the shocking message that was engraved on the stone was decoded. A professor from Halifax was the one who made it all happen. It read, 40 feet below, two million pounds lie buried. The meaning of pounds was unclear, but the phrase certainly had an awful ring to it. Perhaps it wasn't though. Perhaps this indicated the presence of a hidden treasure beneath the surface, ready to be unearthed. However, before we do anything, let's discuss where the treasure came from. A number of hypotheses have been put up. Strangely enough, there were others who believed William Shakespeare to be the treasure's original owner. Those who deny the Bard's existence sometimes attribute his compositions to Francis Bacon. According to these treasure seekers, Bacon might have dug a hole to hide his papers and money. The notion is appealing but the general public now believes that Shakespeare was just himself and not Francis Bacon or anybody else. Marie Antoinette, the notorious queen, may be the rightful owner of the Oak Island treasure according to an alternative idea. Marie allegedly had her maid travel to Nova Scotia so she could conceal her riches and jewels there. Although it was never proven, rumors persisted that the French Navy was also complicit in the tyranny. However, the fact that Marie was found without any gold or jewelry when she was detained at Varennes lends credence to this argument. Some of the hypotheses even include pirates and sailors, and the list is endless. On Oak Island, people believed that Captain Kidd had stashed some of his wealth. Some think Captain Blackbeard confessed to hiding something on the island when he said he did it, where none but Satan and myself can find it. Additionally, there was a theory that postulated that the island's treasure was stashed away by Spanish sailors. Although these theories are interesting in theory, there is no evidence to back any of them. On the other hand, it is possible that more than one of these stories is accurate. For example, perhaps Shakespeare's manuscripts are located next to Antoinette's jewelry, and Blackbeard's treasure is just a few miles away. The following notion, however, is the most intriguing of the bunch. Regarding the supposed Masonic markings found all over Oak Island, which seem to connect with a Masonic ritual, one of the more interesting hypotheses regarding the Oak Island treasure has been put forward. Is there a chance the island was the site of such a ritual? Were the Freemasons involved in any way, and could they have buried a treasure there too? In 1796, a kid called Daniel McGuinness was exploring Oak Island when he discovered a peculiar circular dip in the ground and upon approaching it, saw a tree with branches cut off. This discovery is quite interesting. He reasoned that the branches had been cut down on purpose so that the tree might function as a pulley, and he recalled all the tales he had heard about pirates and treasure chests, so he spoke to his pals and begged them to help him investigate more. 
Curiosity piqued, Daniel McGinnis enlisted the aid of his pals John Smith and Anthony Vaughn in their quest to find out what was under the tree. The three lads dug furiously, and after two feet they struck flagstone. However, you would be mistaken if you believed that this would be sufficient to deter them. In fact, it served simply to heighten their interest. You have to give props to the kids for their perseverance. Can you ever see yourself spending hours in the dirt just digging? They dug roughly 30 feet more, discovering layers upon layers of oak planks. After a while, they came to the realization that they couldn't go any further and understood that it would be years before they could resume their journey. Little did they know, though, that this was only the beginning of their grand adventure. After nearly 10 years, the Onslow Company came and excavated in the same spot as the three lads before them. Using their machinery, they were able to go further down, and after reaching 60 feet, they discovered further oak logs, this time covered in thick layers of coconut fiber and charcoal. In their curiosity about what may lie beneath, the crew dug further and further until they uncovered the stone tablet. Excited to finally find what they had been looking for, they removed another layer of oak logs from the trench. Then, out of nowhere, water began pouring into the pit, leaving them to wonder if their hard work had been in vain. Would this be nothing more than a ruse to divert their attention away from the riches they were seeking? The only option to prevent the water from flooding was to dig a tunnel to release it. Since their efforts were fruitless and the relentless downpour rendered their mission impossible to execute, the Onslow business concluded that further investigation was futile. A 500-foot channel was incorporated into the pit's design to link it to Smith's Cove, allowing unfettered seawater entry and if efforts to drain it are made, it is immediately replenished by the boundless ocean flow. The finding of the enigmatic treasure was greatly affected by this puzzle, and the exploration was delayed by about 50 years as a result of attempts to find a solution. Nevertheless, not even seemingly insurmountable hurdles can discourage searchers. Unfazed by the obstacles presented by the Oak Island treasure, a new group of explorers known as the Truro Company arrived on the island in 1849 and discovered a method to efficiently drill pit samples without water being a problem. Consistently putting in long hours paid off when, while drilling, they struck it rich. They were able to break through two coin-filled chests. There was talk of three gold links from a chain supposedly found as well, but those links mysteriously vanished and nobody had any idea what had happened, leading them to believe this was the first clue to the enormous hidden riches that the stone had promised. The Truro Company found that the so-called money pit was deeper than expected, so they had to drain the water repeatedly. But as they did so, they saw something strange. The water level in the pit was really changing with the tides. The Truro Company considered building a dam to block the water flow and extract the wealth, but they found an older dam, which led them to believe that someone had tried this before, and then a storm hit. The storm's extremely high tide washed away all their efforts. They were now in over their heads, and the project had exhausted their finances to the point that they couldn't afford to rebuild. In 1861, the Oak Island Association made an effort to solve the mystery by devoting all of its resources to reaching a depth of 88 feet in the money pit and creating a new shaft to prevent water from entering. Tragically, the entire bottom section of the pit collapsed as the pump burst, killing one of the team members. Word on the street claimed that spectral pirates were protecting the hidden gold. Another group of adventurers at the tail end of the 18th century took a leap of faith in their quest for glory and riches. While probing the mysteries of the Money Pit and Oak Island, they came upon a sheepskin parchment with letters printed on it, an eerie artifact in and of itself. The fact that they were utterly confused by its meaning was far more upsetting and aggravating. In spite of this, they were determined to keep digging regardless of the meaning of the parchment. Tragically, one of the explorers on the team, Maynard Kaiser, 
died just as they were nearing the completion of their objective. Maynard sadly plummeted to his death down the shaft when they attempted to raise him back to the surface. Was this an accident or part of an island curse? Even the late President Franklin Delano Roosevelt became entangled in the Oak Island riddles. Inspired by tales passed down via his family about sailing, he persisted in unraveling the island's treasure mystery right up to his death in 1945. Despite the fact that the explorer's search for the island's treasure made little headway, Roosevelt remained a member of the old savage group and kept tabs on all the goings-on at Oak Island. In 1939, he had intended to secretly visit the island, but weather and other international concerns prevented it from happening. A New York businessman named Gilbert Hedden, who was interested in the engineering challenges faced by the earlier explorers, became engrossed in the island's enigmatic history in 1928 after reading an article about it. Ready to put his engineering chops to use and, of course, take a chance on discovering the contentious treasure, he and his business partner Fred Blair set sail for the island. While drilling into some of the shafts, they uncovered something more fascinating than anything that had ever been unearthed before. Could this duo hold the secret to unlocking the mystery? Gilbert Hedden and Fred Blair were not disappointed in their choice to tackle Oak Island. They were the first to witness the island's most recent discoveries, which included a stone with markings nearly identical to those found in the Money Pit in 1804 and later some ancient timber at Smith's Cove that seemed to have been the exact material used for the pit's original construction. Their find was a stone with markings nearly identical to those found in the Money Pit in 1804. Subsequently, they came upon some ancient lumber in Smith's Cove that seemed to be the same material as had been used when the pit was first constructed. Irwin Hamilton, another treasure hunter, reached the island in 1938. In 1939, he began drilling and made two noteworthy finds. First, about 190 feet down the money pit, he discovered some interesting rocks and gravel. Upon examining them, Hamilton realized that they were foreign and had been deliberately placed there. After that, he came across a peculiar layer of natural limestone that had some oak splinters in it, leading him to conclude that there must have been a layer of wood beneath the limestone. Hamilton was ecstatic about these findings, but he hit a wall. Robert Restall, who started his quest with the same optimism as the previous explorers, was the next to wish to come in and inspect the island. Upon arrival in 1959, Restall found a stone with the engraving 1,704 inches on it. Sadly, Restall's purpose and life were cut short by a terrible accident. Just as he was about to move his family to Oak Island so he could continue his expedition, he breathed in carbon monoxide from an engine and collapsed unconscious into the money pit. Just to add insult to injury, Robert Restall Jr. was present and saw his father fall. He hurried to the pit to try to save him, unaware that he would also meet the same end. The kid breathed in the same poisonous gases that had sent his father tumbling into the abyss, and the dreadful end came for him as well. Carl Grazer and Cyril Hiltz, two local workers, rushed to the pit in an attempt to descend and save the men from Restall, but they too were overcome by the carbon monoxide and died at the bottom of the pit. This island tragedy, four fatalities in a single day, seemed to be building up to the number seven, the number mandated in the myths that would be required before the riches could be revealed. Robert Dunfield arrived on the island the same year as the men and workers from Restall died. Apparently, he was unfazed by the strange deaths and the stories about ghosts guarding the treasure, because he brought a phalanx of bulldozers, cranes, and other heavy machinery to continue digging the pit. He dug around 140 feet down till he reached the previously found thick layer of limestone. Another man named Daniel C. Blankenship also dug in the money pit in 1965 and his labors were rewarded with the discovery of a stone-shaped heart, a washer, and a hand-wrought nail, none of which made much sense on their own, but which were gradually fitting into a larger picture. 
this is the kind of question that with sufficient time and effort could be resolved. To keep searching for the elusive wealth, a team known as the Triton Alliance was formed in the late 1960s. They planned to deploy heavy machinery in the hopes of making crucial discoveries and most importantly, uncovering the treasure. The extensive search by the team turned up no useful items, including wrought iron scissors that were 300 years old, but the experienced explorers on board would not budge from their difficult objective. Before earlier expeditions attempted to solve the issue, new technology was accessible, and in 1976, the Triton Alliance had a fantastic notion about what they could do to try and reach a breakthrough. The explorers' perseverance paid off when they successfully lowered a camera into the pit using a borehole 10X steel tube, and the results were truly remarkable. As the camera was lowered into the cavity, the Triton Alliance was astonished to see a variety of tools and artifacts floating in the water, including leather shoes and, much to their dismay, a severed human hand. It was an incredibly eventful day for the Triton Alliance members, who were already overjoyed to find three containers that resembled those used for burying valuables. However, their excitement over the chests was quickly overshadowed by the discovery of human remains. In response to disturbing footage from below the shaft, the Triton Alliance dispatched divers to retrieve the objects. However, they were once again taken aback when they discovered that not a single one of the objects had been located, despite the fact that visibility had been severely impaired due to the strong current in the pit, which had caused the sand and dirt to be continually churned. The divers, who were essentially blind in their search for the objects, gave up too soon and never looked back. Tragically, the shaft collapsed minutes after the divers made the decision to go out, forcing them to abandon their work. The crew was determined to get the fascinating objects they had seen in the video footage, so they attempted to dig up the shaft once more. However, they, like many others before them, soon ran out of funding. In 1979, an episode of the TV show, In Search Of, featured the enigmatic island, which garnered the mystery of a large number of fans, both domestically and abroad, ten years after the Triton Alliance formally concluded their search for the hidden treasure. Oak Island was becoming well known thanks to the fascinating anecdotes and startling revelations of the numerous efforts to solve the mystery. In fact, Individuals from various walks of life were interested in the fabled riches and its enigmatic mysteries. Controversy arose in 1983 when the Triton Alliance and one of its members, Fred Nolan, fought for rights to various sections of the island, with a rumored two million pounds buried there. The firm had sued Nolan for possession of seven properties on the island. After Nolan's company lost an appeal in 1989, the legal battles consumed Oak Island for over a decade and had a significant impact on Triton Alliance's tourism industry. The Lagina brothers eventually arrived. At the tender age of 11, Rick Lagina was captivated by an item in the 1965 Reader's Digest that chronicled the treasure hunt adventure of Triton Alliance in Oak Island. In 2005, the brothers spotted a chance to get into Oak Island when they heard a piece of it was for sale for about $7 million. They put half their money into a company called Oak Island Tours, Inc. Even at 50 years old, they were still as determined as they had been as kids to find the treasure they had dreamed of. The Lagina brothers, embarking on a new chapter of their Oak Island adventure, made use of cutting-edge technology that had been unavailable to earlier explorers. Rick and Marty were resolute in their determination to continue their investigation of the island, and with the aid of this cutting-edge technology, they searched not only the legendary Money Pit, but also other previously uncharted regions. With the technical skills to devise effective solutions, the lads were able to overcome the flooding of the pit. Also, to their astonishment, their endeavors uncovered hidden truths and unexpected allies. We'll just have to sit tight and hope that fresh explorers come along and try to solve the mystery. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.